Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the MMA Cycles Weekly Market Update. This is Gianni DePoche, and it's great, as always, to be with you all. This week, we are joined by our special guest, Ray Merriman. Ray, welcome back. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Johnny. Great to be with you again. Thanks for having me. Indeed, indeed. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, so we're, what we're going to do today, uh, per usual, is we're going to review what happened in the markets. It was another uh, interesting week. It was a pretty positive week for several equity markets. Uh, so we'll look at that in a moment. And then Ray and I are going to have a discussion on some key geocosmic signatures uh, coming up and how they may impact various markets. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. And we will begin uh, with looking at the Dow Jones. We see that uh, we had a pretty good rally coming out of the 4th of July holiday uh, in the United States. We closed near the highs of the week despite closing slightly lower on Friday. So that was a pretty constructive uh, week for the trend. And note how the rally pretty much started as Mars ingressed into the sign of Taurus and Venus ingressed into the sign of Cancer on July 5th. So uh, Mars does not tend to do all that well in Taurus, but uh, it could serve to uh, stubbornly solidify a trend, so to speak. Uh, Mercury in Cancer may serve to make communications a bit more emotional, or uh, we could see some key updates on the real estate market. But uh, one of the positive developments in equity markets this last week was the leadership that we saw from the NASDAQ. Now, it's way too early to tell if this is going to be the start of something new, especially with Saturn still in the sign of Aquarius. We have to be cognizant that uh, Saturn has a tendency to depress uh, you know, the sectors ruled by the sign in which it is transiting. So we know that uh, Aquarius rules tech and uh, other um, you know, associated sectors. So Ray, are there any comments you wanted to make on uh, the equity markets before we move on to metals and currencies? Yeah, I think it's interesting to note that that rally you had uh, in the Dow um, that you showed earlier uh, into June 28th, which was a Neptune stationary. You talked about that last week. It was also new moon square Jupiter. Uh, that was about a 61.8% retracement of that previous move down. And um yeah, there you go. And then the uh, the rally we had last week was interesting. You point out a new high, a new uh, three week high or so since the bottom we have at June 17th, which by the way was Venus square Saturn. Uh, yeah. The rally we've had since then was higher in the NASDAQ than it right. was in the Dow and the S&P. But we saw the same thing happen in Europe where the SMI made a higher high on Friday, but the other indexes in Europe did not. In fact, the DAX last week uh, made uh, its lowest low of the year. Um, and you saw the same thing in uh, Asia too. The Nifty did the same thing that the uh, NASDAQ did in the SMI. Uh, but the other markets, oh wait, the other markets in Asia didn't accept the, uh, it was interesting what happened in China. The uh, Shanghai Composite um, made it to our target of 3,400 last week. Um, that's like a new three or four month high in the Shanghai. It's a huge rally that's going on over there. So it's, it's, it's interesting the variations we see in these world stock markets going on right now where uh, India and China and even Switzerland and the NASDAQ seem to be the leaders at the moment. I think that's yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, a flight to quality uh, in, a, in a sense uh, that is, is unfolding. But what's really interesting about these uh, Chinese uh, indices is that, you know, the Chinese markets topped out, uh, I believe it was um, early in 2021, right around the uh, first of three Saturn Uranus square uh, aspects. And it was they, one day after, you are correct. Yeah, and they, they led the market lower um, throughout, you know, the, the last, you know, 12 to 18 months. But, you know, the Dow and uh, various American uh, indices continued to make new all-time highs into the end of 2021, the beginning of 2022. But what most interests me about uh, the Shanghai index that you point out, Ray, is how we formed a low here at the end of April. And it's been yep. you know, performing so much to the ups upside. Yeah, as I say, our, our minimum target for this uh, new 33-month cycle was 3,400. We, we did meet it last week, and there is resistance there. So maybe we get a pullback. But the other interesting thing, as you point out, was Saturn Uranus in 2021 was a high. There were three Saturn Uranus aspects, and each one of those squares correlated the primary cycle top. So you wonder when Saturn comes back to within what 40 minutes of a degree uh, in this September, yeah. give or take a month, if we're if the Shanghai is going to be 
making new highs again. Indeed. And, you know, going into next week, we have uh, a trine aspect between Venus and Saturn uh, on the 13th. And then the following day, we will have a square aspect between uh, Venus and Neptune on the 14th. So I think that's actually a good segue. Let's talk about the U.S. dollar and the euro, uh, right? Yeah. And then we can talk about precious metals. So I have a chart here of the dollar. Um, it was down a little bit on Friday. Uh, the chart hasn't updated quite yet, but do you have any uh, thoughts or comments on the dollar? And then we can look at the euro specifically afterwards. I think the dollar is uh, the key to understanding almost all the markets right now. It went, it, it exploded this uh, Friday, it went up to 107. That's yeah. the highest it's been since October of 2002. It's almost yeah. a 20 year high. The euro fell almost to par, went to 100.70. That's the lowest it's been since December of 2002. These are 20 year cycles that are happening in the currencies and uh uh you know they're, they're they're affecting what's going on with global uh capital i think where you know people are coming into the united states one they're going to start getting a little higher interest and they're also going to get a capital appreciation on the dollar indeed and this is something that uh i had talked about with ulrich uh a couple months ago when we were talking about currency currency specifically you know especially as it pertains to the uranus transit through the sign of taurus you know, there was a lot of talk of cryptocurrency tied into, uh, you know, Uranus and Taurus, but Taurus still rules currencies and the world reserve currency is the dollar. So we're seeing that boom uh, in the dollar. As you mentioned, it's at basically multi-decade highs, 20 year highs. So I think that's another uh, element to the Uranus transit through Taurus. Absolutely. And it's probably a, a, a symbol that um, some central banks are going to have to readjust their valuations to the dollar. Um, you can see some, you can see some uh, interventions going on here of the likes we haven't seen in quite some time. Indeed, indeed. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at gold and silver, and then I will uh, touch on crude oil. So, uh, gold, Ray, what are your thoughts on what's happening in this market? Well, it, it broke. I mean, our, our key support was 1785, and even down to 1750, and it broke. And uh, this reminds me so much of what happened after the all-time high in gold in 2011, when it reached 1920. Then it dropped back to 1520 three times. Now this time we made an all-time high of 2089 in August of 2020. And we dropped back twice last year to 1670 to 1680. I think we're, on our, we're headed back there again for a third time. Back in 2012, when it did the third time, the market did rally $270, $300. In fact, every time it rallied $275 to $300 when it went to $1520. I think you're going to see the same thing again if it's dropped. And I think it will drop to $1675, give or take $25. And I think you're going to see a, you know, a $270, $300 rally, not to a new high, but then I think it's going to follow the same fate you saw from 2011 to 2015. Well, Ray, I also want to tip my hat to you because uh, for several months, you've been uh, pretty defensive on precious metals and gold. And I think for so many commodity traders and investors, it's been very frustrating for them in the last basically 12 to 18 months as commodities have boomed, but precious metals have done nothing. And as uh, you have pointed out in uh, several of your, you know, long-term and even intermediate-term analyses of precious metals. You know, we're late in some long-term cycles, and that, that's a really big headwind for precious metals right now. Well, you know, I, I think uh, for the frustrated metals traders, um, get ready to buy. I think you're going to, a 250 to $300 rally uh, is in the works pretty soon. I think that's worth, uh, I think that's worth a good trade for two to five months. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's look at uh, silver, too, and then I can touch on uh, crude oil. Well, silver dropped to 1870 last week. That's, that's the lowest it's been since I think it was October of uh, 2020. So it's, it's nearly a two, it's a 21 month low. And, uh, this is also fitting our target. We thought if it dropped below 2040, we're going to see it go down to 1900 or maybe even eventually down to 15, $15. So, uh, these are the kinds of things we're looking at. We're going to be watching very closely because the 27-month cycle low uh, is coming due here uh, for silver, too, as measured from the, the, the low of March 18th, 2020, when it dropped to 1164. We are 27 months, and we are looking for a 27-month low. So we'll be following that very closely in our daily and our weekly reports uh, that Jenny and I uh, both uh, 
uh, release uh, every day uh, with the market. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. And then I'm going to touch on crude oil uh, very quickly. And then Ray, we're going to talk about that semi-square that's coming up uh, yeah. with Jupiter, uh, Jupiter and Uranus, right? Yes. Yeah, and that's going to be on the 21st of July. So I'm going to have you touch on that in just a moment. So crude oil uh, pulled back pretty sharply in the last couple of weeks, uh, but we did uh, hit a pretty, what could be a significant low on July 6th. Um, so we'll have to see how that unfolds. There weren't really any uh, major uh, crude oil related aspects or geocosmic signatures that unfolded around that time. Uh, we did have the holidays, so usually we, we can add on another day uh, for the orb of influence. But uh, crude oil really wouldn't be surprised if it traded sideways for a few months and really just built a new price base uh, in order to you know determine if it wants to go back up uh, higher or lower. But I do want to point out also uh, that crude oil still has not made its new all-time high. But when you consider the magnitude um, of the move that we saw coming from April of 2020, you know, it was up like 17, 1800 uh, percent from, from that low, uh, you know, depending on which if you consider the uh, when the nearby futures contract went in the negative territory, if you use in the next month uh, in, in April of 2020. But beside the point, you know, it could use uh, some uh, rest here, so to speak. But I do think the uh, longer term picture does remain constructive. But keep in mind, we are in a uh, a period where Neptune has just turned retrograde. And I do think mm -hmm. Jupiter is going, yeah, Jupiter is going retrograde later this month uh, on July 28th. So I think that could be a pretty key uh, aspect for this market we definitely want to keep an eye on. So Ray, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. And I want to give you the floor to talk about that semi-square between uh, Jupiter and Uranus approaching next week or in two weeks. It's uh, Jupiter semi-square Saturn. Oh, Saturn, um, not Uranus. Yes, yeah. but, but it's following the Jupiter semi-square Uranus. They're both going on since May, but the first passage of the Jupiter semi-square Saturn is July 21st. And that, along with the Neptune stationary and the Neptune aspects we have next week, are probably uh, correlating with uh, important, I would think, important temporary lows uh, or, or reversals anyway in the crude oil market. Now, the Jupiter semi-square Saturn is important. This is the first one-eighth phase since the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction of December 20th, 2020. Wow. December 2020. Yeah. And um, what's fascinating about this is that the Jupiter-Saturn we had in December of 2020 was the first Jupiter-Saturn conjunction since we had in late 1999, early 2000. And you might remember back then it was Jupiter Saturn in Taurus conjuncts, whereas Uranus in Aquarius. And that was the all time high in the stock market near the end of that. This time we have Jupiter conjunct Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus, reverse positions. And right after the last square, which was December 24th, we had the all time high in the stock market. We started this decline. And of course, we're wondering now is, just, is this just a correction of the whole move up? Or is this going to be another bear market like we had in 2000 to 2002? Um, so the aspects are very similar. And back then, when the stock market bottomed in October 2002, that was very close to time that Jupiter, uh, I think, was semi-square uh, Saturn. So we're back to the Jupiter semi-square Saturn starting July 21st. It's going to last, uh, I think it goes into March of next year. I think it goes into March. At the same time, Jupiter is going to semi-square Uranus. The big part is when they come together they're in their second passage. Jupiter will semi-square Saturn September 21st. Jupiter will semi-square Uranus on September 28th. That's a very, very big time because they're both semi-squaring each other and Saturn is squaring Uranus. Jupiter's on the midpoint of it. We're probably, we're thinking about having a webinar, uh, Johnny, uh, with you and Ulrich again at that point, because that's such an important geocosmic period. And it does seem to be affecting the currencies, the crude oil market, the stock market, the precious metals markets. Big stuff coming up. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, that's um, a great uh, intro introductory monologue uh, to what we're going to be talking about even in more depth uh, early next week, because we have our July edition of the MMA Cycles Report set to be published on Monday uh, and Tuesday, uh, July 11th and 12th. So if you want to know how we're position, uh, positioning ourselves uh, in these markets during these very interesting uh, geocosmic periods, you definitely want to check those out. Pick up a copy at www.mmacycles.com. Ray, we do have a couple other announcements 
uh, we want to talk about. Um, let's 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 go in chronological order first. Uh, we're going to be launching an ETF report uh, in the month of August, uh, and I'm going to be authoring it. We're going to be covering eight ETFs. Is there anything that you wanted to share on that? Well, I think it's very important that we we have this new month report. We've had a lot of requests uh, from subscribers that they wanted to uh, to know what are, how could they trade our futures markets report, the MA Cycles report, which basically commodities and futures and stock indexes. How can they trade it uh, with ETFs? Well, we decided. Uh, well, we're listening to your 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 wishes here, and we're putting out this ETF report on these eight basic markets. Johnny, do you want to cover what those eight basic markets are? Because I think they're very important, will be of interest to our listeners. Absolutely. So we're going to be covering the SPY, uh, S&P, uh, BITO, which is a Bitcoin ETF. We're going to be covering TLT, which is the long-term treasury uh, ETF, GDX, the gold miner ETF, XLE, the energy ETF, XLV, uh, which is the healthcare ETF, XLK, which is the technology ETF, and XHB, which is a real estate slash home building ETF. So I think we cover a, a lot of bases in uh, some very key sectors that many of our uh, readers and viewers are interested in. Those are the areas that we get the most questions concerning. Yeah. Um, unusual, but uh, because we don't usually cover it in our other reports, but there's so many people interested in the real estate market. Yeah. have been for the last year and especially right now. And I think it's very timely that you're going to offer that ETF in our analysis of this new monthly report. Very good. Indeed. Indeed. So definitely stay tuned to that uh, for any announcements that uh, we have on that front. We'll definitely be uh, giving you more details as the date approaches. The second matter that we want to talk about today uh, is the MMA investment retreat that we're going to be having uh, in Troy, Michigan uh, in the beginning of September. So that's going to be between September 9th uh, and the 11th. Is that right, Ray? Yeah, September 9th to 11th. And this is a kind of a unique experience where um, our subscribers or anybody really who's interested in our work uh, can have the opportunity to share uh, not only our presentations, but we're going to be we're going to be spending eight hours a day uh, having lunches together, dinners together, and that's where a lot of the information exchanges go on when you can talk to us and your your the other attendees who are in most cases uh, very, very good analysts themselves. There's incredible energy, incredible ideas that are shared when we have this opportunity to, to meet with each other. It's a limited uh, participation, a limited number of people are gonna be accepting this, but uh, if you are a trader or a long-term investor interested in how to position yourself uh, for the long-term, this is something you really won't wanna miss. And as I say, it will be limited, so let us know if you're interested before this fills up. All right, definitely uh, keep uh, watching for details as they emerge on that front, uh, but you can find out more information as well at www.mmacycles.com. Well, Ray, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much Great. for taking uh, time to join me this week. It's always a pleasure, uh, and you'll be back next month as well. So uh, viewers, definitely stay tuned on that, and we will have uh, another special guest coming up in a couple weeks as well. So definitely uh, keep that uh, on your radar. So thanks again, Ray. Any last words? No, I'm just looking forward to seeing Matthew Kaiser, Dr. Doc, Dr. Copper, who's going to be your guest in two weeks. I think he's just a phenomenal researcher. Can't wait to see him. Yeah, he sure is. All right, Ray, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for watching. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Johnny. You too.